poet the poet. We're still at the Samuels International Art Galleries in Sheepshead Bay, and I'm still um, uh, I'm still whoever I am. Uh, <laughs> moving right along now, we come to Andrew Clark, who is uh, not only a poet, but you better watch out for this one because he's an art critic. That's right. Um, what do you think of all this, Andrew? <laughs> I like, you know, uh, quite a bit that, that that's here, especially this uh, this uh, work that's uh, uh, behind you. I've been ad admiring it, you know, as the shows have been getting taped, 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 and stuff. It's really quite nice. So, as a, whoever it is, it really he, is. He freelances uh, art journalism and all kinds of other journalism. Uh, he's popped up on a show called Laura Ludwig's The Earth Is Not on Tape, um, and he's uh, been featured in New York, Baltimore, and Chicago which is also, coincidentally, the railroad he used right. to, uh, to get to those places, right, the, the uh, New York, Baltimore, and Chicago. Chicago. That's right. Uh, they tended to run around in circles. <laughs> <laughs> the old B&O B, 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 B B line, that's right. 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 Exactly. Uh, more like the, uh, more like the, the uh, NY, NY, B, and C, if you, can, uh, <laughs> if you can say it. But that was a real mouthful, so they started calling it the B&O instead. Right, right. exactly. Right. Smelly old train. All right. Andrew, how about a poem? Okay. This uh, first poem is uh, something that I, I read at uh, a party that we gave um, some friends of ours who got married oh, about a year or so ago. It's it has not a very either working at the railroad. Is no, it? it's not. No, no. Actually, it has no mentions of railroading at all. I don't, oh, okay. I, I don't think. Uh, and it has a very inventive title. It's just called poem. Um, I wish I had thought of that. Yeah, it's, really. It's an amazing. It's, huh? it's tough being single in New York. We agreed one night over drinks at the Pentop. Your heart was broken and you didn't feel adventurous because there was nothing left in your heart with which to venture forth. You are the least difficult of women. All you want is boundless love. And in your dreams, both day and night, you'll be standing in a bathtub crying, Mother, mother, who am I? If he will just come back once and kiss me on the face. His long hair brush my temple, it's throbbing. I could put my clothes on and I guess walk the streets again. But that didn't happen, at least not yet. You tried to reconcile with Bob, but life became like that day on the beach. Are you alive, you asked? And in the silence, I imagine which followed, you shuttled back and forth between two lives, waiting for the taper of romance to burst into flame or just gleam brightly, your bed lying patient and trembling in the exile of its fragrant covers, like a mountain lake that will never be abandoned. And now there are two beds that bear your imprint, both perfumed, both bearing your shape, one carrying the talisman of your cards, the other waiting for him and the warmth of his embraces. Come December 22nd, city noises will be louder because you'll be together. Being together, you will be louder than calling separately across a telephone, one to the other. And there is no noise like the rare silence when you both sleep, even country noises. A dog bays at the moon, but when it loves the moon, it bows, and the hitherto frowning moon fawns and slips. It is the day before November 14th. It is not snowing yet, but increasingly the sky is taking on that gray cast. Dreary November. People are already making plans for the winter, unpacking heavy coats, talking of ski trips. It seems I'm the only one with an exceptional desire for spring. For the only signs of spring are Karen Heilman's dancing and a perky little dog barking in a bar. Here and there, eyes which suddenly light up with blue, like a ripple subsiding under a lily pad, or with brown, like a freshly plowed field on a Vermont Sunday in May. And these eyes are undoubtedly Jennifer's and Bill's, because they are advancing into spring before us, and tomorrow is Sunday. This poem goes on too long, because our friendship is deep and strong. Deep and strong for this life and times, deep and strong as art is long and, is, as, is long and uninterruptible. And I would make this poem as long as I hope our friendship lasts, if I could write poems that long. I hope there will be more. More walks on both the east and west side and searches for sushi. More evenings going to Paul Taylor and eating at really good restaurants. More discussions over the phone and in rooftop bars on the, on the respective greatness of Mahler and Brahms and the difficulties of love. More sunburns and more days like those on Fire Island in which you and I, lotion covered and wearing shorts, fed the hungry hordes, got high, and watched the green shore lights fade on the late ferry home. More arguments over NAFTA, Ross Perot, and city politics while I eat baked lasagna for lunch. Let's advance and change everything, but leave these little oases intact in case the heart gets thirsty en route. And I should probably propose myself as, a, as godfather if you have any children, since I will probably earn more money someday accidentally and could teach him or her how to swim. And now in this next section, I was going to go somewhat abstract, 
but ideas are obscure and nothing should be obscure tonight. You will live half the year in a house in the hills and half the year in a house in our arms. And we peer into the future and see you happy and hope it is a sign that we will be happy too. Something to cling to, happiness, the least and best of human attainments. It's an epithalamium, right? Yes, that's yeah. exactly right. Yeah, based well, off it's of, a yeah. poem written for a marriage. An right. epic poem. An epic poem. Right? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> they go on for a long <laughs> time. You're right. I hope so. Well, yeah, so far, exactly. No, no, no. It didn't. They've been married for almost a year now, actually. Oh, that's good. Yeah. You have a marvelous watch if you can. Uh, do you prefer writing the poems, or do you prefer writing the journalism? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I, I prefer writing th the poems. The, uh, the, the uh, journalism is, is nice. I get a big kick out of it, you know, but the right. poems are better. It's okay, I don't know. You can still hire her for journalism. Right, don't worry yeah, about that. exactly. All right, how about another poem? Sure. Um, this one is just called Men, and it's shorter. Uh, <laughs> it's only a page. Um, a short man. Right, exactly. A dwarf. Um, men of <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, men of foul tempers. Men of my own two hands. Men of the early morning. The machine rolls at Amy's command, and gear after gear, and the odor of coffee pots that oozes from under shop doors, and the odor of hot bread and rolls. The man who feels his socks stiffened by last night's sweat and puts them on again and his shirt stiffened by last night's sweat and puts it on again, who tells himself in the morning he will wash up at night, and at night that he will wash up in the morning because he's too tired. And the one who wishes he really did have AIDS so he could finally rest on his soft white bed. And the immigrant who dines on nothing while under his tasty nose leftovers from first class tables are buried in the kill. And the one who sleeps in the subway and is chased by the policeman to the next station. Men of foul tempers, men of my own two hands, men of the early morning. Ah. Oh, man. How foul tempered were they? <laughs> well, they get pretty foul tempered. I go out and I and I. Uh, Was well, that before or after they heard the poem? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think both before, during, and after they were foul tempered. Ah, oh, well. <laughs> yeah, but poetry is supposed to have charms that soothes the foul tempered. That's uh, right. I guess this one didn't work though. They were yeah. still mm -hmm. marching around. Ah, okay. Um, what triggered this one off? Uh, well, I work for a group called the Coalition for the Homeless, okay. and, and I go out one night a week uh, right. uh, with them, and we do the Upper Manhattan route. So we go up to Harlem Hospital and Crack Park, or Crack Park on 53rd and 11th, and things mm -hmm. like, like that. So between Harlem Hospital and coming down to the Transverse on 5th and 72nd, this and its sister piece has got a little germ planted. Uh -huh. All right, let's slip another one in. Okay. This one's short. Um, it's Does called. Who? No, it's not that short. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it's called Sharon Stone. She was on set over the winter, and she collapsed. And of course, the Post had this enormous headline about her. Oh, that was the Sharon Stone. The Sharon right. Stone. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly, exactly right. And and of course, this one has a marvelously inventive title called Sharon Stone. <laughs> um, Sharon Stone has collapsed. I was trotting along, and suddenly it started raining and snowing. And you said it was hailing, but hailing hits you in the head hard. So it was really snowing and raining, and I was in such a hurry to meet you, but the traffic was acting exactly like the sky. And suddenly I see a headline, Sharon Stone has collapsed. There is no snow in Hollywood. There is no rain in California. I have been to a lot of parties and acted pretty disgracefully, but I never actually collapsed. Oh, Sharon Stone, we love you. Get up. You know, <laughs> it reminds me, Samuel Taylor Coleridge actually wrote, a poem about Sharon Stone. It was on the <laughs> yeah. Um Let's see if I remember it. It was uh, in Xanadu did Sharon Stone a stately pleasure dome decree, at least until the cops found out. That's right. <laughs> oh. Uh, and then she could, she definitely took right. care of one and of them. What are the future plans of Andrew Clark besides uh, keeping away from Sharon Stone? No, right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, um, I have a, a, a few futures planned, and uh, there's this um, series of, of articles that I'm writing for the nation these days, highlighting some of the younger artists and such. Well, that's the nation, the magazine, yeah. that's right. not the nation, the country. 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 Yes, yeah. that's exactly right. Mm -hmm. um, any, any slick career moves coming up? Any slick career moves coming up? Well, if somebody wants to hire me on, you know, on for TV, I'm willing to, to do that. I'm like, like, they have a poet laureate on on, on MTV, and and, and and there's one in in Brooklyn. So, uh, if another station wants one, I'm up for sale. 
Oh, you're for sale. Absolutely. Oh, Absolutely. Right. I'm about, a hired gun. How about selling us one more phone? Sure. So let's see if I can find one that's uh, relatively short. Well, okay. we'll do this one. That looks good. Okay. Jennifer Awake. The opals hiding in your lids as you sleep, as you ride ponies mysteriously, spring to bloom like the blue flowers of autumn, each seven o'clock. And blonde hair tumbles languorously towards the yawning rubber band, tan, your hand pressing all that riotous black sleep into the quiet form of daylight and its sunny disregard for the luminous volutions and the budding waltzes we swoop through in the nights. Before dawn, you, war you roar with your eyes shut, unsmiling. Your volcanic flesh hides everything from the watchman. And the tendrils of dreams, strange policemen running by to escape you, the racing vertiginous rage of your, more, of your murmuring need. But he is day's guardian saint, that policeman. And leaning from your open window, you ask him what to wear and how to comb your hair modestly, for that is now your mode. Only by chance, tripping on stairs, do you repeat the dance. And then, in the perfect variety of subdued, impeccably disguised, white, black, pink, blue, and golden ambiance, do we find that nightly savage in a trance. Ah, very moving. Marion, <laughs> do you have any Sharon Stone poems? No, I don't. Okay, no, well, no I know, I, when I was working at the bank, I got to know a lot of famous people, but right. I'm not allowed to talk about them. Ah, that's probably, that's probably good. <laughs> I just, no, I just, I just wanted to check, and uh, I want to thank both of you, Andrew Clark and Marion Palm, for coming on Poet the Poet. Um, I got a friend who did also did not write a Sharon Stone poem, and, but he wrote about something very close to everyone's heart. His name is Triolet Trevor. He writes Triolets. And uh, one thing that poets just love to do is laundry. So here is a laundry triolet called Spin Cycle. My favorite laundry moment is the high speed spin, the time when faithless bubbles disappear down the drain, and the machine kicks up a backbeat, a whining cacophonous din. My favorite laundry moment is the high speed spin. My ladies unmentionables fly out the hatch, nail me on the chin. Never underestimate a snapping garter's pain. My favorite laundry moment is the high-speed spin, the time when faithless bubbles disappear down the drain. We've all done laundry. That's mm -hmm. a, oh, well, the group that I had before the group that I'm doing now is called the Poetry Laundrette. Is that where they wow. Yeah, no, that's where we cleaned up our work. Ah, here's, a here's a frightening one for you. And you thought he played the fiddle. This is one of mine. The music of hell is unchallengeable. All damn souls dance, and it's ladies' choice. Even staff demons are not excused when Satan is giving me accordion lessons. Oh, I guess it's just as well. I guess it's just as well he didn't give me poetry uh, lessons. Here's a more elegant one. A pebble drops into a pond. Gentle ripples spread in every direction, subtly altering all that they touch. What do you mean you're seasick? Well, we come to the end of the other one. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Marilyn. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Fran and Sam of Samuel's uh, International Art Gallery and Chiefs at Bay for letting us come in and make public nuisances of ourselves. And we'll see you next time on Poet the Poet. Bon voyage.